we went to this convention in, in Monroe, New Jersey, which uh, is not really too far from here. But anyway, I hadn't seen Scott in years. I like Scott. I love Scott. You know, I, I heard a lot of all the troubles and trials and tribulations he's had over the course of the years. And uh, my wife and I were going out to get a bite to eat. And uh, we came across Scott, and I introduced him. He said, Jim, you look great. And he was a sweetheart of a man. He was the sweetheart that I remember. He was humble. He was nice. He was sober. Um, you know, I introduced him to my wife, because I don't introduce my wife to everybody. You know, I don't want to get introduced to all the boys. Um, I introduced my wife to people that I think, you know, are, are nice people. So anyway, Scott was nothing but a gentleman and a sweetheart and everything. And uh, we went out to get something to eat, my wife and I, and we came back. Later on, that, later on that afternoon, I guess Scott, you know, how do I say this? Scott wanted to come up to our room because he didn't want... Uh, he didn't want he didn't want the people at the bar to see him doing anything that he wasn't supposed to be doing, so he came up to our room and, and he hung out there for a while and uh, he partook in a few cocktails and uh, I don't mean to sound corny by saying it like that, but he had a few drinks and they, I never seen a man do a 180 like that in my entire life. Now I'm trying to I'm trying I'm trying to give my wife the the eye you know to just calm down because she doesn't understand how the boys can get you know, but Scott. You know, I still love Scott, you know, uh, I care for him and I, I wish him nothing but the best, but uh, the Scott Hall that entered my room was not the Scott Hall that left my room and I just felt an obligation. I, first of all, I wanted to, to get him out of my room, you know, to, to kind of diffuse the situation because he was getting a little bit... He was crazy in your room, I didn't even know that. Yeah, 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 I never told anybody, you know, he, he, you know, I didn't say, I didn't give details, but the, the way I worded it was, and the way I'm wording is the Scott that entered my room is not the Scott that left my room so I mean something had to happen in there and you know people aren't idiots right you know I mean we just didn't sit there and, and, and play you know checkers um, but anyway his personality changed considerably I mean he did a 180 and I just wanted to get him out of my room so we all three we all down to the elevator and just so happened where the elevator was there was a side door Scott saw a door and said fuck it I'll go through it oh so I followed him and my wife followed behind me, and smart. My wife took a beeline to the left and left me and Scott there. Well, fuck, we walked in at the wrong time, you know, because that was when the comedian said this in poor taste. Not even a fucking joke. He said the Iron Sheik's career fell faster than Owen Hart. Well, fuck, I'm sure, because I know my toes curled and my fingers just like just clenched up, and I'm sure everybody in that room felt the same way. And there was a dais with about, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 people on there, wrestlers and former wrestlers and all that stuff. Iron Sheik was up there. Scott heard that, and he bolted towards the stage. He grabbed that fucking comic and put him up against a wall, and the guy's feet were fucking dangling, you know. So Scott's got him up there, finally drops him. He didn't hit him or nothing, but he had him up there pretty good. Now, he drops the guy, grabs the mic, says what he's got to say about Owen. He puts Owen over now. He's doing his little... He's, now he's kind of like kicked into a razor character, and he's got a little slur going on. So I mean, that's it's apparent what what he was doing prior to walking in the room. So I'm trying to get him down a little, just you know, by holding his hand because I don't want to get into a fight with Scott. You know, um, I'm trying to get him down and calm him. And the promoter that's running the convention, he's coming up, Jim. You got to help us, Jim. You got to help us. And, okay, Scott, come on, Scott, come on. So we get him down off the dais or the stage, whatever you want to call it. And uh, now. <laughs> The people, they loved it. They yeah. popped for it, right? So, listen, everybody everybody probably would have wanted to kick the, the, kick the comic's ass. But Scott acted on it. He didn't kick his ass. He, you know, he put him up against the right. wall. Yeah. So now, he said what he had to say. He made his point. Put a period at the end of a sentence. That was it. Comes down off. Now the people start up. They get they, they're throwing dry logs in the fucking fire, right? Razor, 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 razor. Well, there he goes again, back up to the stage. Grabs the mic, cuts another little promo, and did all we could to get him down, you know, without being real physical. And uh, that was it. I mean, I kind of just, Raven was sitting there, and he's going, you know, he's, he's looking up, you know, he's, uh, he's, you know, he's giggling and shit. You know, he didn't get involved. You know, he was doing his little Scott Levy routine, you know, but, uh, and we just got him out of the room. And I just, people have asked me, you know, what were you doing there with Scott? Well, I had, I felt a little obligation because he had been in my room and, like I said, he had a couple of drinks and he didn't want anybody to see it. And so uh, 
I just wanted to get him out of there. And actually, first primary was to get him out of my room, and I didn't realize he was going to do that, so I kind of felt a little obligated. Plus, I didn't want the promoter to pull the plug on the convention the next day or the uh, appearances. Everyone, we had a lot of people coming in, so they would they were gonna they were gonna squash it. So. Hmm. 